Hi, this is David from Ash IT. And following on from yesterday's unboxing and first thoughts of the M1 MacBook Pro, today we're going to be doing a performance test of the M1 MacBook Pro Apple Silicon Edition versus the Intel Early 2020 i5 with 16 gigabytes of RAM. So the object of this video today, we're going to be comparing power consumption, the battery life, the gaming performance, and just the day-to-day -day performance of certain apps against the two models say the base Apple Silicon versus one of the uprated MacBook Pro Intel models, just to see how much of a difference we're talking moving to the Apple Silicon edition. So these are both at 100% battery life and they're both on a clean boot. We're gonna start this off, we're gonna run through some of our performance tests and then we're gonna check how much battery life has been used. So let's fire them up, see how they boot up. Now I am still running Catalina on the uh, Intel MacBook Pro. I'm not prepared ready because this is my personal machine. So you can see the Apple Silicon boots in faster. Not a massive amount difference, but it is noticeable. Okay, so we're in. 100% battery life. Unfortunately, it's not percentage gauge on Big Sur, but there we go, 100%. What we're gonna do is we're gonna first off start by installing some applications. So, first job, we're gonna do DaVinci Resolve. Now, the reason I've chosen DaVinci Resolve, firstly, we've got some projects because we use DaVinci Resolve for some of our projects ourselves. But secondly, I know that Final Cut Pro is going to be amazing on the Apple Silicon. I want to get a more real world of other apps as well, how they do. So we're going to install both of these and see firstly how quickly applications install between these two models. So, probably about 10, 15 seconds difference there between installing that larger app. Not too bad, but you know, that's uh, certainly an improvement if you were opening, opening and closing apps all day. Right, let's open up this application and we're gonna run a, one of our projects through it. So very similar startup times on uh, both of those there. Right, so uh, obviously we're in DaVinci Resolve now on both of these machines. We've got one of our large, larger videos in here at 22 minutes. Um, quite a lot of different footage, timelines and audio clips. Both of these uh, scrub nicely within the actual timeline, so there's no problems there and play back nicely. We're gonna export both of these out now and we're gonna see how long each of these take to export. And we are gonna hit go. So let's see how long these take to render through. One thing I will note as well, I mean, this battery test that we'll be doing through this is pretty much worst case. This is really heavy lifting on these machines. Plus we've got brightness at 100% because we're quite bright in our uh, studio. So let's see how long it takes to render these videos. As a point of comparison as well, when we render this on our workstation, which has got a, a six core 12 thread, uh, it's a, I think it's a 10th gen 8500 and also an RTX 2070, this takes about 11 minutes on that system. So it's going to be interesting to see how well it runs on these laptops. Also, bear in mind why these are running on battery. The fans are coming on on the Intel MacBook Pro. This one is cool as a cucumber, no fan at all. Okay, there we go. We are done. Now that was incredibly impressive. We are finished on the actual Apple Silicon and we're only at 66% currently on the Intel. Now bear in mind also that this is the higher end Intel 10th gen with 16 gigabytes of RAM as well. And another thing that's really impressive, we're down to 76% uh, battery on the Intel so far. And on this one, we're down to 94% battery and we've been using the laptop for just over 20 minutes on, I mean, this is really heavy use at maximum brightness. So that's an incredible difference in battery life when you're using this machine on load. So I'm gonna leave the Apple Silicon just to idle now whilst this is finishing off. Wow, and finally, the Intel has finished. Whew, what a difference. So just to summarize, the Apple Silicon, it finished this test in 50 minutes and 24 seconds.
that is three minutes and 30 seconds different from our main six core 12 thread workstation with a 2070. The Intel MacBook Pro on the other hand finished that in 25 minutes and 27 seconds. So a full 10 minutes longer than the Apple Silicon. And this is the 16 gigabyte RAM model against the eight gigabyte RAM model as well. Also, just to take a note, we are done now down to 61% battery life on the Intel model. On the Apple Silicon, we are down to 92%. Uh, this has been, these laptops have been heavily used now for uh, just over 30 minutes. So in just over 30 minutes of absolutely hammering these laptops, this has used 8% of battery, and this one here has used 39% of battery. That is a phenomenal difference. You know, you could really use this for video editing without a power pack, and you'd probably go for at least half a day, I'd imagine. Whereas this one here, you, you can deplete a battery in a couple of hours. So, you know, this is massive strides forward here from, from Apple, and, and it's, I'm much more impressed than I thought I was gonna be. So what we're gonna do now, uh, for the final sort of test whilst on battery, I'm gonna run just some YouTube audio streaming for an hour. Uh, and just see where we are on the batteries after that. So if I just set that up, and again, this isn't that realistic as well because we're gonna be running at 100% brightness, which most people won't. I mean, I never run my machine on 100% brightness, but it is bright in here, so it makes it easier for the camera. Okay, so I'm gonna start that, and I'm gonna leave that for an hour. Uh, we are on 61% still on the Intel and 92% on the Apple Silicon. We're gonna come back in an hour, and we're gonna see how much they've depleted. Okay, so here we are. So we've done an hour of streaming YouTube uh, music at 100% brightness. And in that time, the Intel has dropped from 61% down to 42%. So that has done 19% in an hour, as opposed to the Apple Silicon, which was 92% and it's now dropped to 83%. So that has done 9% in an hour. So you can see straight away that there's a massive improvement in the battery life, uh, even on low use and also in high productivity use on these machines. Apple's claims of about 20 hours of movie watching or whatever on these MacBook Pro does seem to be very, very accurate. This is a massive improvement because I always thought the MacBook Pro 13 was, was reasonable and if you are very light use on this 13 inch, it is reasonable, but obviously having used this uh, MacBook Pro Apple Silicon edition, Wow, what a difference, especially video editing and not seeing that big of a drop. Now we're just gonna plug these both back in now and we're gonna run a Cinebench and test the actual power drawer of these laptops uh, and see how that goes. Now what we're gonna quickly do here is we're gonna run Cinebench R23 on both the MacBook Pro Intel against obviously the Apple Silicon. We're gonna do one at a time. And whilst we're running it, I'm also gonna have my watts meter running to the left so we can see the maximum power draw we're gonna get on each machine to see how they stack up against each other. And we're gonna see obviously what, how they perform against each other. So this is idling approximately between six and eight watts on the Intel. So let's see what it goes to when we hit the multi-core test. And we're off. Hopefully you can read it on the screen. Um, it were at 55.9, so 56 watts on the Intel machine. 57. Yes. You may also be able to hear on the actual camera, the fans are just starting to spin up on the Intel. And we've dropped down to 53 watts. I'm guessing it's throttling a little bit while the turbo beast has run out. There we have it. We have a score of 5,182 points on the Intel. Now, the wattage, if you can see on the meter, was between 52 and 58 throughout the whole test, so it didn't throttle after any period of time, which was good. But the fans were maxed out throughout that entire test. Let's close that one down, and we're going to switch over to the Apple Silicon. Do the same again. Just noticing straight away, firing up programs and uh, idling. The Apple Silicon idles at about six watts, whereas the Intel bounces around six to eight. And also when you're firing up the programs, the Apple Silicon was about 15 watts at a maximum, whereas the Intel boosts right up into 30, 40 watts when you're opening up programs. So a big difference straight away I've noticed on the power consumption. So let's run this uh, CPU multi-core and see how we get on. And we're off. Just in case you can't see the watt meter, we're running at 20, what, 28.8 watts. So yeah, about half 
what the intel was running at. Now we are four minutes into this full CPU multi-core run on the Apple Silicon and the fans have just started coming on very quietly, I can just hear them. Keyboard is still absolutely cool. Okay, so we're nearing the end of the uh, Cinebench run on the Apple Silicon Mac. The fans were on low, about the latter part of the actual benchmark. The keyboard is still only lukewarm, so really comfortable still to type on, unlike the Intel. And it ran at 29 watts throughout the test, so it didn't throttle at all. That gave us a score of 7,802. So you're looking at a 50% increase in performance over the Intel 10th gen from the uh, 2020 MacBook Pro 13 of last year, or this year, early this year, at half the wattage. So 28 watts versus 57 watts. So half the wattage, but 50% more improvement. That is an absolutely incredible result. Intel seriously need to pull, some, you know, pull their finger out to try and improve their performance in the next couple of years to sort of catch back up, I think. So the first gaming benchmark we're going to do is we're going to run the Warhammer uh, benchmark, the Total War Warhammer benchmark that's running in Mac OS. I'm run on the Intel first. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to time the startup time for loading into the game as well, just to see whether you know the Rosetta is going to slow down the actual uh, Apple Silicon, or whether it's actually that much quicker that it, it boots in quicker than the Intel. So we'll see. This is a notoriously slow game to get into anyway, so we might speed this footage up if it's slow. So there we are, about 48 excruciating seconds to load into the game. This is why people say don't game on max. Let's run the benchmark. So if we go to graphics, we'll be low 1280 by 800. And then we're just gonna run the benchmark. So there we go, that's the 12 80 by 800 and in low settings on the Intel, we've got an average frames per second of 49.4. Uh, so low that I'm not even going to bother trying to run that at 1440p. The fans have ramped up to quite a high volume now, I don't know if you can hear that on the camera. And the keyboard is really warm to touch. It's actually, I, it's not comfortable to keep my fingers on there for too long at a time. So there we go, that is the Intel. Let's cancel out of that and then we're going to skip over to its Apple Silicon brother. So I'll get the timer ready again, load up steam on this machine, right here we go. So maybe a couple of seconds longer to load in but considering that's uh, converting it to a Rosetta that is pretty good. So, Okay so now on the Apple Silicon we've changed the settings to 1280 by 800 and low so that we are the same as the Intel, go to advanced again, benchmark and we're off. So there we have it, we've got an average frames per second of 59.9, so actually a 20% improvement over the Intel, and that's running through Rosetta. So that's really quite a nice improvement, considering this is emulated through Rosetta. And the best thing about this, having run the benchmark, I ran it twice on this machine, and the fan hasn't kicked in yet, unlike the Intel, which ran once and the fan was blaring away, and the keyboard is just lukewarm to the touch. So that alone, <laughs> is the best win in my eyes over the actual frames per second. Right now we're going to try Dota on both these at the same time. I'm just going to watch a game so that way we can uh, have them both running. Check the frames per second. So press and play on both. See how they take to load in. So very similar loading time coming into the game. No problems there. Let's go to the video settings. Make sure we're using the same. So 1440 by 900. Uh, both on Vulcan, and I'm going to put it sort of the third setting across. Right, so let's try and see if we can watch the same match, would be good. Right, so the Apple Silicon's loaded in first, follows quite close behind by the Intel. So you can see straight away there's quite a big difference in frame rate. The Intel is sort of bouncing all over the place, the fan's also going up quite nicely on the Intel as well. 
it's also hot to the touch on the keyboard. Whereas the Apple Silicon, we're well above the 70 frames per second. The keyboard is only just slightly warm and there's no fan noise yet. So it's talking 25-30% difference in performance here towards the Apple Silicon. So this is a massive improvement and without fan noise. So there we go, that's a big win for the Apple Silicon. This works using Vulkan so it's able to sort of leverage the power of the actual Apple chip. Definitely more than the Warhammer. Now we're going to try Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I'm going to do it on the Intel first. Now I'm going to mute the gain sound for this because what I want to do is listen for the fan noise. Okay, so this is the Intel MacBook Pro and we've got it in 1280 by 800 on lowest graphics, VSync off, and let's run the benchmark. Now I've turned the volume off so that we can hear the fans spinning up on, on these machines. And I've also got my decibel reader. Okay, so the fans are just starting to spin up on this MacBook. Only just audible. The keyboard's actually not too hot either, it's okay. Okay, now the, I don't know if you can hear on the actual camera, but the fans are ramping up quite a lot. I'll put that in front of the screen. Now hopefully you can see that, but I'm going to go quiet. So we're at 53 decibels on my phone this close to the laptop. I'm nearly 54. It's really, really quite loud now. I'd imagine this is max fan speed, so I'm going gonna, gonna to get rid of the phone. The keyboard's quite hot, not, un not too uncomfortable, but it's hot. And there we go. So we have an average frame, or an average FPS, of 43 on the Intel system. We're now going to switch across, and we're going to run the same test again on the uh, Apple Silicon MacBook Pro. Okay, so we have the same settings as we had on the Intel MacBook Pro. So let's run that benchmark on the Apple Silicon. Mute the volume again so we can hear if the fans come on and how loud. No warmth in this keyboard at all so far. Okay, so we're coming to the end of the test. Now, I didn't even bother putting the decibel meter up to the screen because there was no fan noise, it hasn't even come on. So that's really incredible. And the keyboard is only lukewarm to the touch, so really comfortable. You can still keep your hands on here, no problems whatsoever. And that's without any fan whatsoever. So really impressive stuff. Right, and we've got an average frame per second of 64 with the Apple Silicon. So this Apple Silicon has approximately 50% more performance than the Intel MacBook. And this is running through Rosetta. So this is an absolutely incredible performance difference between the two. And it does all of that without any fan noise. Whereas the Intel was hot and loud. So that is an incredible performance by the uh, M1 MacBook Pro there. Right, so to wrap this performance review up, for the last couple of days now, we have been absolutely hammering this MacBook Pro Apple Silicon and also the MacBook Air Apple Silicon. I've been so impressed with what I've seen so far and especially comparing it against the early 2020 Intel edition. I was always quite impressed with this machine. It annoyed me that it got hot and loud when you did anything to put it under load, but I was very impressed with what it gave me for the performance in this size machine for a day-to-day -day work laptop. Having played and used this in all different situations for the last two days. Honestly, it is such an improvement in pretty much every area. It runs so incredibly quietly, even when you're like hitting it in sort of long-term sustained load, like Cinebench or video editing. The keyboard remains cool. It's not too hot underneath. It's got all the great features of the previous MacBook Pro. So you've got the great keyboard, the great screen, the great trackpad. It has fantastic battery life. It performs, in most cases, at least 50% better than the MacBook Pro at half the power of the old Intel MacBook Pro. I mean, that is unheard of. Having had year after year of pretty much the same rubbish from Intel, just rebadged with a new generation, 
and maybe one or two percent better than the previous year to have such a leap in performance at lower power wattage it's just incredible i mean i thought amd was knocking out of the park with the ryzen and, and this has just come along and it's just blown me away even the graphics performance on this is incredible for what it is. The Tiger Lake graphics and the you know this 10th generation graphics were supposed to be a big improvement from Intel. They really haven't impressed me at all. Most games are completely, I find, unplayable on this 13 inch MacBook. I, I don't even bother trying. But having fired up a few games on this Apple Silicon, they've run incredibly well and it doesn't get hot and it doesn't get loud. And that's what I love about this. Whereas I just don't want to play anything on this Mac because I know it's gonna get loud, the keyboard's gonna get hot, and I'm gonna get poor performance and why bother? So in summary, if you are buying a laptop now, there's only a couple of reasons I would stick with the Intel. If you need the four ports, so the two on either side, if you want to use an external GPU, or if you want boot camp or certain applications that may still not work, there might be a few out there I haven't found any, anything that hasn't worked so far, then you might want to stick with the Intel. If you want quiet running machine, if you want a cool running machine with incredible battery life and incredible performance, get the Apple Silicon MacBook Pro. It's an absolute beast of machine. I am expecting them to come up with a slightly better model shortly, which will have probably the four ports and replace this one at the moment. So you are stuck with a two port base model. But even so, having used this, it is incredible. So my advice would be, if you're buying a MacBook Pro now, this is the one to buy. Please subscribe and hit the notifications because there will be more videos coming up. We're gonna be doing one on the MacBook Air tomorrow. Uh, plus we've got plenty more laptops on the way. Thank you for watching.